My name is Dale LaCour, and I have a special guest today, Felicia Marie. She's going to talk about her results that she's had since she started balancing her gut, which is what this is all about, is providing information for the things that can happen when you talk to the motherboard, basically, is what we call it, right? Felicia had brain fog. She had an autoimmune thing going on, super low energy, low mood just not feeling well at all. And she was into, you know, pretty healthy lifestyle. So Felicia, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Let us know like how you were feeling and then what, how you're feeling now, like the changes that you've seen since you've really been targeting that gut brain access. Thank you so much, Del, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I am totally a mental wellness warrior. I am such a mental wellness warrior. I got involved with healing my gut. So almost two years now is when I started healing my gut. Prior to that, I was into a lot of like weightlifting and CrossFit, jujitsu, competition, very into fitness and nutrition. I thought I was eating really well, to be honest. I thought I was doing really good as far as getting good nutrients into my body, but I had no idea about the gut. And I had no idea what I was doing. Prior to healing my gut, I was dealing with a lot of autoimmune and the autoimmune that I dealt with was lupus. And mm. all autoimmunes can be looked at. They're all very similar, I would say, as far as the pinpoint of when they start in the body, but they all manifest differently with your, with your gene expression. So how my autoimmune was expressed is I would have really bad rashes all over my arm. I had really bad rashes, right? And it started on my hands and like in between all of my fingers, mm -hmm. right here in the palm, all over my arms. It was really painful, really irritating. It hurt. It would itch really bad. It would keep me up at night. Actually, I would be like sleep. I would itch in my sleep. And that's kind of when my symptoms started. After that, I started dealing with a lot of inflammation in my body, a lot of pain in my head, a lot of migraines, a lot of brain fog. You know, Adele, I would be shopping at the store and probably 45 minutes into shopping, I would not even know why I was there. That's how bad my brain fog was. Like wow. I would actually call my mom or somebody and say, I have no idea what I'm doing here. It was so bad. Lots of days where I didn't want to get out of bed because I was in so much pain. I, I worked full time. So I just worked through a lot of the pain. A lot of the pain was not physical pain too. A lot of it was just like the inflammation inside of my body, just sending those signals and was really, really hard for me to focus and do well in, in life, anything in life. If you have a hard time focusing and you have brain fog, you really aren't achieving what you think you're achieving. You're just kind of multitasking at a, at a really slow rate is what I felt like. That was like the beginning of the autoimmune stages. And it got really bad to the point where I was having issues with my kidneys. I was having issues. I would get infections all the time. And it just kind of progressed over years. And Sometimes like I would try certain natural things. I tried weird teas. I tried CBD, different, different types of plant extracts using oils for 10 years. You know, I had tried a lot of things. I did different diets for autoimmune, saw a natural path in Arizona when I lived there and nothing would really get to the root of it. Like I would feel better every once in a while, you know? So a couple of years ago, I was pregnant with my number five, my baby number five. And this was almost two years ago. Towards the end of my pregnancy, I started getting really, really sick to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. And I would have to force myself to even walk around and take care of my children. I started getting blood tests because it started getting really bad. And my doctor had noticed that I was very extremely anemic is what he told me. Well, I was so anemic to the point where I stopped making my own blood. Okay. So yeah. Your blood is supposed to be super dark and rich, like, like very pigmented. Mine was light pink. It was like the color of my shirt, actually. So oh. they would go to, I know they would go to draw my blood and the woman was literally looking at it and she's like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I should take this because like your blood is so light. Wow. And so from the testing that they did, they, they saw that I was anemic. I had been told I was anemic my whole life. It runs in my family is what we're all told. And my sister had done some extensive testing and found out that we were low in B12 and, and low in iron. So after, you know, a period of a couple months, I started getting worse and my skin started turning yellow and I started to not be able to eat anymore. 
and I was sleeping throughout most of the day at that time. I was getting iron infusions three times a week right into my veins at the hospital, at the chemo unit, actually. And I ended up having to get put me into labor and push having the baby because they were concerned that they weren't going to be able to have blood on site for me in time, just in case. It was extremely dangerous, like 100%. I can't even explain how dangerous it is to not be able to make your own red blood cells in your body. At any moment, if anything goes wrong, it's end game for you because you have to have blood for all of your organs to live and to pump your heart and to create oxygen. You ha- it, it affects everything in your body. I had baby tie tie, everything was good. Had my six week checkup and they tested my blood and it was even worse. And usually six weeks after you have a baby, you start to get a little better because you don't have a baby sucking everything from you. And that's what they thought was going to happen. But little did they know I was going into liver failure. So they started testing my liver function and my kidney function and they were both not functioning very well. So at that point, I got sent to a hematologist. She's like one of the best in our area here where I live and I'm in Salt Lake City. And she had no idea, Dale. She had no idea what she was dealing with. And she was one of the top hematologists. She's also an oncologist as well. So she knew a lot, right? She had a lot of knowledge. So I got, I got to a point where to be a little vulnerable, I got to a point where I was just done. I was done going to the doctors and all of the testing and getting this and getting that. So I actually just kind of accepted that I might not make it. And I traveled with my kids seven weeks postpartum, traveled with my kids to the beach and went and took them to see their friends in Arizona. By the time I got back, it was like two weeks that I had been gone. I got back. I got a phone call from the hematologist nurse from some more blood tests that they wanted that they did after I got back. And she was like, over the phone, she tells me, we want you to come in to do a colonoscopy and look for cancer. And I was like, there's no. Well, first of all, I sat and cried in my car because I was filling up my gas like I was pumping gas. And I couldn't believe what she had just said to me over the phone. And I was so scared. And all I could think about was who's going to take care of my babies? You know, who's going to, who's going to be there for them if I don't make it through whatever is going on. Right. So something in my, I, so first of all, I told her, no, I said, I'm not doing it. I need some time to think like, I, I just need some time. I'll call you guys back. And then I had this feeling in my gut which is so funny because I didn't really understand that deep intuitive connection until, you know, a couple months after um, healing my gut. But my mother-in-law who like has always pushed me towards holistic living, right? She got me in doTERRA. She got me in isogenics. She's always been trying to help me become a naturalist, really. She gave me this box, this fundamentals box. And what's so funny about my story I had that box of fundamentals for four months prior to having baby Tai Tai. And I seriously had it up on my dresser and I looked at it almost every single day. I looked at this box and I just stared at it. And I would tell my friends and our family, they'd be like, oh, what is that? And I was like, oh, it's just some stuff that Janice gave me. You know, she wants me to try it. I'll try it after I have the baby. Like I'll wait until after I have the baby. (laughs) Just laugh at that right now. Crazy. Wow. It's crazy. What I had available to me at the time that I really needed it, I was super just naive, to be honest, and didn't even try it. And that's exactly what my body needed. So my gut told me to go home right then after I got off the phone with them. And I went home and I opened up that box and I started taking it right then and there. I didn't know anything about the fundamentals. I had no idea that what it was in it. I didn't know it was probiotics, prebiotics. I had no clue. And I didn't care because I was like, I was at that moment of desperation where I had two paths that I could go on. I have this path where I'm going to see this oncologist and they may find something there. They may find cancer. Who knows what they could find? You're going to find something if you're looking for it. That's my, that's how I live. And then I had this other path of like taking control of my life and actually like allowing something else to happen, something I hadn't tried, something that I felt in my gut that I was supposed to actually use. And I listened to that intuitive moment, that one moment. It's just a moment. It's very fast. And you have to be very aware and listen. 
And I did. And it changed my life. 100% within probably nine days, I went back to the doctors and did another blood test because I started to feel better. And I said, I want you guys to pull my blood again, but I just want to see where I'm at. So I go in and my hematologist was like almost cracked herself. She couldn't believe the differences in the blood results from literally two weeks prior, almost two weeks, not even two weeks. It was like nine days, I think, to wow. like a nine day difference was phenomenal what my blood was showing. So from there on out, I just started, you know what, Dell? to be to be completely honest with everyone. I had never, I don't think in my prior life before healing my gut, knew what it felt like to be like everybody else, to feel right? It. I lived a long life of depression and anxiety and addiction and stress and really bad negative thoughts and bad self-talk. I didn't even know what it felt like to feel the way I did three three months after getting on the fundamentals. And I like still to this day pinch myself because I'm two years in and I spent almost my entire life not feeling good. And it's phenomenal. So I went from, you know, being sick, having all of these mental health problems and brain fog and just making poor choices in life because of it to being the strongest and, you know, most inspiring high performer that I am today. I'm a high performer right now. I mean, I just get it on a daily basis and I don't stop and I have so much energy and I just feel vibrant and people can feel it when they're around me. They're like, Ooh, I love being around her. Cause she just is so awesome and so happy. And that really mm-hmm. comes from how I feel every day. And that starts with what I take every single day and what I put into my body. So that that's the biggest part of my transformation was that moment after I had baby Tai Tai and I haven't looked back and I haven't missed a day. Actually, I may have missed like maybe two days of the fundamentals in two years, only two days. Wow. And that was not on purpose. <laughs> wow. You are on fire. <laughs> yeah. I just. <laughs> oh my God. Like it's just to, to think about where you were. And you're like total like sunshine, vibrancy, like just exude energy and positivity. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. What a story. It, um, it's been so much fun. I tell people all the time, I'm like, don't get in your own way. Cause I really needed that. And like it came to me the way that I needed to receive it from my mother in law, from someone that actually cared about me, not some random person on the internet, but someone that knew me. She knew I needed it and I did not listen. And I really wish I would have started because my the, my pregnancy would have been better. Maybe Ty Ty's microbiome would have been set up better. The delivery would have been better, you know, like it, it, but you know, there's no regrets here. Like I don't live in the past. I'm grateful for how it happened, but don't like just my message is don't be naive about it. You know, if it, if you're not going to lose anything, you have nothing to lose to try something that's going to help you feel better. Right. You're losing right now by not trying something that's going to help you feel better. Right, right. And we know, I mean, the science is proving that everything goes back to the microbiome. One question yes. though, with the lupus, did you ever get on medications or no, you didn't go that route at all? I never did. I always went natural. I had some really weird tea that was like a cellular tea that really helped me the majority of the time, but it never got, I never felt like it got to the root of it. You know, like I would feel a little bit better and I could perform, but I still had symptoms. I haven't had symptoms in a year and a half. That's insane. I don't even know what brain fog is anymore, Dale. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> and, and that's kind of one of the first things that I hear from people is the, like, I just have this clearing like this clarity all of a sudden. And it ju- it's just amazing that it just goes back to the gut. The gut is like running the show. No question yeah. about it. Wow. The, gut. the autoimmune thing goes back to the gut, the energy, the mood, the stress resilience, all of that just goes back to the gut. It's amazing. Wow. Felicia, thank you so much for sharing this story. So anything you want to say, just a last minute thought? A lot of the times we don't, trust ourselves, right? 
we're so good at looking around us and not asking ourselves on the inside what we really need. And my, like my intuition knew, really knew that I needed that in my life and I didn't listen to it. So if I could say anything, just really learn to trust your intuition and know that anything that's coming to you in your life, there's a reason for it. It's not a coincidence. Mm. It's not a, it's not a coincidence that things come to you or people are sharing things with you. There really is a reason behind everything. And it may be the one thing, like the last thing you expected that you would really, really need to get to the next level in life. And, and just to feel, to feel good. You were, you're not meant to be here to suffer and to be diseased and to not be resilient and not to enjoy your life. Like you were here to actually make an impact and have a purpose, but to feel amazing every day. It's your right to feel good every day. So that's my, that's my message. That is beautiful. Powerful, powerful. This is true. Things do come our way. You know, somebody has a reason that you saw maybe a message about this group or somebody added you to this group. Like, don't ignore that. And I always like to ask, like, the what if, you know what I mean? Like, what if this is the thing that's going to have you feeling better? 